2009, staring at the ceiling. I had no reason to live in my mind. And then here I am now living it up. Tucson is the first place I really ever traveled to. I love the mountain, I love the desert. To survive here, you know, you need to have great endurance. So photogenic. So is this not only training for you, it's training for Chewy? That's correct. We're all heat adapted now. That's what we moved here for. He eats a lot of cucumbers, tons of cucumbers. Mm. So mainly cucumbers. You gonna show off your tricks? I did develop from Kona a fear of heat. So it's, it's, it's another piece of why I needed to come here for the most part. Prior to the last two bad Konas, I, I thought, I'm, I'm good in the heat. I love the heat. Ooh, and then you walk 10 miles down, down uh, uh, the King K, King, what is it? King, King K, Queen K. <laughs> I haven't been there in a while, eh? So what's your session? The session is two to two and a half hours on the bike. And the main set is three by 10 minutes at threshold, little break, four by eight minutes of this like little uh, over-unders VO2 max set. So it's pretty tough. My tooth is missing, so I have developed a bit of a uh, whistle to my, my speaking. So how do you say your last name with the whistle? <laughs> Sanders. <laughs> All right, I think we're ready. So like five years ago, a lot of people rode the trainer, but not a lot of people rode on Zwift, you know? Certainly people weren't doing quality indoors very often. Not a lot of guys. But I've watched over the years, uh, that's changed. Even if you're anti-indoor training, over time you'll slowly see the benefits, you'll get curious, and then all of a sudden you'll have uh, 50,000 miles on Zwift. Every time you're on there, there's 2,500 to 3,000 people every single time. And they are all watching you and they're seeing what you're doing. In fact, you can click on someone's name. I look at Christian and Gustav's workouts all the time. I can't do them, you know what I mean? Like it's the pathway for me to victory is different than the pathway for them to victory. And you're the second most followed on Zwift. Yeah, Jan is the number one. <laughs> Him too, I wouldn't have thought that he would have been an indoor training guy. So it's cool to see, uh, you know, someone see all the benefits of indoor training. So now I actually have a coach, Nicole Eden, for accountability, for training plan, because it's, it's very difficult to look at yourself objectively. Afterwards, I upload my workout onto Zwift as well. And so people are able to see the wattage, the heart rate, everything. When you know someone's watching, you do a good job. Well, you've been here now, this is three times, yeah? I went into Kona with no expectations and had performances. Went in with high expectations, had horrible performances. Feel like I learned a lot, you know? But I don't wanna, I don't wanna say. <laughs> I just wanna kinda go. <laughs> Prove to myself that I've learned a lot. In 2009, staring at the ceiling, you know, I had no, uh, I had no reason to live in my mind. And then here I am now living it up. And uh, of course I'm proud of where I started and I've had bumps along the road. I've had a lot of doubters and haters along the way and I have not listened to any of them and I've continued on my path. And so I'm, uh, I'm, I'm very proud of that. When I filmed Lucy, yeah. she had a, a dancing cactus and then I've just seen a dancing cactus. It's weird. What? I got this for the baby's room. My dad and his girlfriend got it for us. It's wraps. <laughs> don't right. dance. That's I don't know. Right. <laughs> the baby's on the way. There is pregnant. Yeah, it's exciting. I'm a little nervous, of course. Um, as you can see, I can't even take care of myself. So having to take care of uh, another human being will be a, a quick learning curve for me, I'm sure. But I'm excited, I've read one book so far. In short, the book argues that swaddling is important. I had to practice that though, I had to learn how to do that. I was thinking about getting a doll. Precious little lactate meter, very important for our training. And then, which way? Well, these one. should be on the outside probably. Okay, one tight around him. Like how tight? 
What'd you say? Like, so he can't move? <laughs> he's not supposed to be able to move, right? His arms. Like, Maybe he's in the he womb. Oh, you precious lactate meter. We're gonna need you tomorrow on the track. 14 by a K. Five millimole the whole way. Hey, that rhymed. <laughs> I love learning, and so I have a feeling this little guy is gonna teach me more than I've ever learned before. <sighs> I forgot my swim bag in the car. Ah, oh, it's in the truck. Oh, damn it. Should we get Lionel to do a really cool dive in? <laughs> we should. With these goggles on, they're gonna fly off my head. If you could, could just keep his head. legs straight, it would be cool. All right, here we go. Best dive for you. Best one I ever did. <laughs> One of the things that I have gotten from Christian and Gustav is that you should want your competitors to be their absolute best. And because when you beat them at their absolute best, you have truly beaten them and there's nothing they can say to themselves excuse-wise, etc. And if you're a true sportsman, I think that's the right attitude. People looking in think that like the reason that Christian and Gustav, they've got like this, this, this very sophisticated training method, totally novel training method. Not true, 100% not true. They're just really gifted athletes, work hard. They've got a coach who's very hard on them and who makes them work hard, and, but do it in a smart manner. And the comp, that's the Norwegian method, but that's oh. nothing new. <laughs> that's here, his oldest time. Here's the secret, uh -huh. is that it's Gustav and Chris. So it's two people and they push each other. Well, we're just emulating them. Yeah, like we've we've seen uh, Well, we have a good theory as to what the success is coming from. So we're emulating this now. So who's Christian? Who's Gustav? <sighs> Neither. Neither. We're gonna be those guys. <laughs> <laughs> Me and my mom. She got a lot of miles actually. 10,000 on the bike. Your mom? Yeah. I've also created like a meetup and I only invite my mom to the meetup. <laughs> I, I googled Iron Man in 2009 and it was Craig Alexander winning Kona 2009. And so it would be really cool to have googled it in 2009 in a basement and then to do it however many years later that is. Now I'm all about the athletes and really I'm racing the people on the start line. And so to get a win over Christian and Gustav, who are currently the best guys in the world, the future of long distance racing, uh, that would be very meaningful for me. Kona would be icing on the cake that it would occur in Kona, but I'm all about competition, about, you know, if those guys aren't there, Jan's not there, yeah, it's cool, it's a life dream, I achieved it, it'd be great, but without them there, it, it wouldn't have the same meaning. Happiest day of my life, November 2017, when Aaron and I got married. I always get the date wrong. It's either the 29th or the 30th. <laughs> I just say November. <laughs> I always get it wrong. It's the 29th. It's the 29th. It's either the 29th or the 30th. <laughs>